I have a warning for you before I give this section of the lecture. Um, and it has to do with design because um, we're going to do something that is a little bit of, um, you know, blaspheming in a way. Um, because we're going to do something that you should never, ever, ever do in design intentionally or without a very specific reason for doing so. Okay, so I know you're all like really locked in right now and, and you're intrigued and you want to know what it is that we're going to do where we're breaking all the rules of architectural design, but here it is. Um, so under sets and sequence, oh wait, I forgot. Um, so you guys, uh, I wanted you to take a look at the shape of this thing. Okay. And, and actually let me jump in and, um, increase the count to like 20. Whoops. That's not what I wanted. Step size to go up. Okay. So when you look at this thing, like in profile, what do you notice? It looks like a flower. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, close enough. It's so, so basically, like, there, there's an operation that's happening in this bottom section around Antarctica, and then there's one that's happening in, like, all of the southern hemisphere, and then, like, a little bit into the northern hemisphere, and then there's, like, a different set of operations that's happening to the data up top. Yeah. Um, do you have any idea why? No? Okay. I'll quickly preface it. Um, so it's not exactly clear because it's so like broken up into unexpected sections of the planet, but um, the data is being read up to the top. So like this pattern that we have is like 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, so on and so forth up to 23, but that's operating in a linear fashion. So when it stops and it repeats, it goes back down from 23 to 5. So that's what these um, splits are. And in the patterning. Does that make any sense? It should make some sense. I mean, I don't know why this, this is unexpected. I don't know why that the count at the bottom was so high, but something's happening where it's like reading from five or well, five would be the close ones. So that's like down here, these ones. So it's like five, seven, nine, 11, 13. And it just keeps jumping out to a point down here where it gets up to 23 and then it jumps back to five. So it jumps back down to this guy, then it reads to 7, to 9, to 13, 17, so on and so forth, out to 23, and then it jumps back and it does it all over again, out to 23. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah, so it's like these sweeping kind of like petals in a way that are kind of exploding outward. So what I want to do, and this is the part that I warned you about, is I'm going to randomize it. I'm going to make it random. That's the bad word. It's the R word that you should never say random. in architectural design. Arbitrary. Or arbitrary, yeah. What about randomly on purpose? You. <laughs> you can get away with that in very yeah. few occasions. Yeah. Okay? But anyway, so we're going to do, um, let's go up to set sequence and uh, I don't want you to use random reduce even though I said the word random or um, this random there's a difference uh, between random and jitter okay random and this is this is actually something that the reason I'm showing you jitter instead of random because you never truly want to generate random numbers you want to set parameters for what numbers you want to operate with and then you want to mix them up that's what jitter does um, it's a little bit less of a, you know, of a rule breakage. Um, so anyway, jitter. I'm being very inefficient in this video. Sets, sequence. Jitter is going to ask you for three things. It'll ask you for a list of values to shuffle. Um, that would be our data. That's this. It will ask you for the shuffling strength. And now this is different. So it says um, 0, 0.0 equals no shuffling and 1.0 equals complete shuffling. So what that means 
is that we need to create a slider from 0, 0.0 to 1.0, and as we slide it back and forth, it will create a different randomized assortment of the numbers that we've fed it. Um, so let's do uh, 0 to 1.0. And if you leave it at zero, it's just going to stick with the default. And then um, the seed. So seed is just going to say, um, oh, you know what? Sorry. It was jitter strength. Yeah, jitter strength. Sorry. So uh, basically, like, you're going to notice this pattern. It's that it's not a completely different random assortment of, uh, of numbers. It's just that it's going to shuffle it more or less. So if shuttle, if shuffle strength 0.1 only shuffles the numbers by um, one to two places in the list, and it just kind of shuffles it locally along your list, um, then shuffle strength 1.0 would completely shuffle it up to a maximum of 450 places. Does that make sense? Yeah. That should make sense. Okay, so uh, then the other one is going to be the jitter strength, which is going to be integers. So we're going to say like 0 to 10, or I'm sorry, the uh, seed um, value. And... A seed value is going to um, change the configuration. It's just that's the one that truly is going to say, like, okay, so even if it only shifted one or two places, I don't like this one or two places. So I'm going to change it so that it might shuffle it to the one place, but it'll change this one to a two place and that one to a one place and to a two place, two place, one place. So it kind of, like, gives you a different um, assortment of the same shuffle strength. Um, so let's jitter this thing up. Um, you're going to see the values here change. So let's plug that in. I plugged it in. Now all the values are looking kind of the same. So let's go to a jitter strength of 0 0.1. So now you'll notice that it did change. It did change kind of significantly. Like our first five is now down here. And I think it's just because we have so many numbers and we have such a small sampling. So they have to shuffle more. Um, so shuffle strength of one should be plenty, but I'm going to change that seed value then to um, change it up a little bit, and let's plug this in to amplify. So now that, um, that issue that I had with being able to kind of see the pattern of where these panels were going um, is, has been mitigated. So now my, um, all of my panels are, are kind of a randomized assortment away, but within the same boundaries that I've defined. So I want to tighten this up a little bit. I'm going to bring my panels back closer to home. Okay. Uh, let's go up to like maybe a two-step. There we go. And uh, I'm actually going to reduce the amount of subdivisions. So I'm going to go to, um, let's see, three and six, one, six, three and six. Actually, no, let's do six and 12. Okay, so I just simplified that so that you can see the geometry a little bit better and, and the nature of its um, randomness. Uh, but basically, as I'm shifting this, I can change the jitter strength to make it more random, and then I can change the seed to kind of get just a different configuration. There we go. Cool. Okay, so um, what questions do you have? Well, uh, so the shuffling part is for very specific purposes. Um, but the part that I really wanted you to understand is how to get enough data set that you're running an operation on a full kind of um, length list of a lot of information or, or a lot of uh, base geometry and move and transforms. So I'm going to teach you like another transforming that's scaling. Um, that follows a similar logic, and then we're going to move into like something actually architectural next week. Yeah. Question? Uh, what is shuffling here? Isn't it just shuffling the same pattern? Sorry, what? Isn't shuffling the same pattern that we used before? 
Yeah, when you're using jitter, it's always going to shuffle this list. Yeah. Mark, just go back and play with the original because it's kind of tough. Yeah, if I, went, if I went back to zero on this, it would go back to the original list. See, 5.0, 5.3, 5.6, 5.9. It's going in order now. Yes. Somehow my my parts keep in the numbers are different. Do you always get something in? Uh, I'll take a look at your numbers, but it's just a numbers thing. Okay. Any other questions before I close the video?